On a dark night in March of 1863, during the height of the Civil War, the steamer USS Sumter quietly slipped out of port with a top-secret weapon of the Union Navy in tow. The submarine Alligator, the Sumter, on its way to deliver the Alligator to the port of Charleston, sailed into a storm in one of the roughest pieces of ocean in the Atlantic, Cape Hatteras. In order to save itself and crew, the Sumter cut the tow line to the Alligator. The Alligator disappeared beneath the waves, sinking into historical obscurity. Until recently, NOAA, the U.S. Navy, and other partners have launched an effort to try and locate the wreck of the alligator and fill the historical void that was created over a hundred years ago. The search will focus on a target area that has the greatest probability of containing the alligator. We do not know where the alligator is, is a fact. We have a number of targets here that we have to go back to to determine is or is not. The odds of any target this early in the search being hit very, very low. But it takes luck to find these things. Anything can happen. You never know. It is isn't even a haystack. The Hunt for the Alligator is an exciting project that combines history, mystery, and technology. And through the Hunt for the Alligator, we hope to inspire the public to learn more about oceans, sciences, technology. There's a number of different types of acoustic equipment that we can use to look for underwater sites. Uh, side scan sonar is one example of a towfish. It's a, it's a unit that is towed behind the vessel and it's equipped with these sonar transducers that send out energy. It's acoustic energy, it's sound waves. These sound waves propagate down to the seafloor and they're reflected back and recorded by the instrument. So as, the, as we tow the instrument along, we can take basically an acoustic picture of the seafloor. So here we have a wreck site, and it looks like it's about, oh, I'd say 20 to 30 meters long and perhaps 15 meters wide, uh, sort of rectangular in shape. Uh, and there's a lot of debris scattered all around here. And when we went over it with the side scan sonar, we're getting clear targets with the sonar. We also got clear targets with the magnetometer telling us that it's probably a metallic or man-made item. In our search for the alligator, we're relying on side scan sonar. We're also relying on magnetometer data. A magnetometer is another technology used during the expedition to help scientists locate metallic objects on the bottom. Even when they are buried in sand, the alligator with its iron hull would show up as a well-defined target. The limitation is the width of the actual search area on the bottom and the depth of the water. Because the ocean floor is very irregular and extremely deep in some areas, it's hard to pull a towfish over the bottom. The area the magnetometer actually sees is very narrow, so it's difficult to cover every square inch of the bottom in such a big target area. Another survey tool that's frequently used in finding shipwrecks is multi-beam sonar. It's mounted underneath the ship and measures a whole swath about the size of a football field as the ship drives along. The alligator was only 30 to 46 feet long and four and a half to six feet wide. Looking for something this small in a vast ocean is very similar to looking for a needle in a haystack. And if this wasn't challenging enough, the search crew must also take into consideration and allow for extra time for weather, bad weather, Today we started off bright and early under a nice clear sky, although we knew that weather could pose a problem. In fact, weather is what kept us in yesterday. We were supposed to be out here surveying yesterday, and instead we were pier side the entire day. High seas and high winds prevented us from going out. It was weather that caused the alligator to be lost at sea. This area of the Atlantic is known to be treacherous in bad weather. On that fateful night in 1863, the steamer Sumter and its tow, the submarine Alligator, didn't have the advantage of NOAA weather service reports to know what they were steaming into. Today, weather plays a critical role in current expeditions to search for the sub. We have the accuracy and technology of long-range forecasting to let us know when to stay in port. In 1863, this was something the crew of the Sumter did not have. Despite setbacks from weather 
and technological limitations in the first year of operations, the search for the alligator continues. Through this search, we hope to inspire you to learn more about our oceans and about our nation's rich maritime heritage. The hunt for the alligator combines history, mystery, and technology. If we can find the alligator, we can find anything. So come and join us on the hunt for the alligator.